everybody welcome to my suburban oasis so today we're down in my um, potting room my seedling starting room and uh, growing some things I've been moving a lot of things out of this room outside and starting to harden them off but um, can't do that yet with a lot of my warm season vegetables although some of them I have put into my external um, greenhouse my veg truck greenhouse that I showed you before um, and so today we're going to get started on some other warm weather plants, some winter squash, which um, my family likes a lot, the butternut squash. We're going to do some angel wing gourds and uh, get those planted. And then I will give you a little seedling update to show you what I have growing inside right now. And then I'll show you an update of my potager garden um, and how things are growing out there. I've got quite a few of my cool weather crops into the ground now. So if you're enjoying my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Um, also hit that notification bell to get notified anytime a new video comes out. All right, well let's get started. So today what I'm doing is um, I'm gonna use this uh, tray because it has a little bit more room in it for some things. Uh, I'm going to grow the gourds, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna grow the squash into these three um, cardboard um, containers. These are just old toilet paper rolls that I've cut and then put in here um, and filled up with a bit of soil. Um, and so I'm going to put two seeds into each one. We're going to get those going and then like I said we're going to sow some angel wing gourds. Um, it says to put two to three seeds per pot four to five weeks before the last frost which is exactly um, the time of year that this is. Uh, and so it will be great to get those going. I just have some pre-moistened potting soil. I'm going to make sure that it is semi-firmed down, but not too much. Just enough to make sure that when I water, the soil doesn't all sink to the bottom. All right, I've got as many as I would like filled, so yay, I didn't run out of potting mix. Now, what we're going to put in these top three ones are the water uh, butternut squash. It's a winter squash, and it's called Waltham Butternut. It is an award winner. It is also an heirloom seed, and it says to um, cover them with about an inch of soil, firm lightly, and keep evenly moist, and they should emerge within 10 to 14 days. These are 85 days to harvest, so that's about um, a good three months. Sometimes it might take longer, sometimes it might be shorter. So as I said, I'm just going to put two seeds into each one here. I don't want to grow too many because these do tend to get um, quite large and I don't have a giant um, garden. You are supposed to space them 36 inches apart. Um, I might try growing them in a different um, spot this year than I did last year because I found once the vines grew up uh, they were on the south side of my garden that they then blocked some of the light that my tomato plants would have otherwise been getting for a couple hours during the day. So I don't want to do that again. All right now let me just tap these off. Okay, that looks pretty good and I'm just gonna spray this down some although maybe I will just have to water them we'll see how well this soaks in nope, I think this is gonna work really well you're gonna start to see uh, the cardboard will change color because it will also absorb a lot of the moisture um, from the soil and help keep them moist which is important And by the time that I get ready to plant these out, um, the cardboard will be almost uh, completely broken down and it will probably only take maybe a week when I put them in the soil because of how much more damp the soil outside is um, in comparison 
to indoors, it stays damp all the time and won't dry out. The other nice thing about planting in a cardboard like this is that you can easily see when it becomes um, dry uh, because you don't want the cardboard to dry completely out because that means that your soil is completely dried out because it acts like a bit like a terracotta where it just wicks the water out um, from the soil any excess water I think we're just about there Alright, let's move on to these angel wing gourds. Uh, let's see here. I guess I have one tag left. But this will be the only type of gourd that I grow, so just call them gourds for now. I ordered these seeds from Hertz Garden and I never ordered from them before. Um, I'm not sure that I really want to order from them again. They send them all in these little baggies and then they come with these little teeny tiny slips um, that say what they are, but there's no pictures on them. So I did get some flowers. Um, and so for example, this one says guinea hen. I cannot remember what that looks like um, and so I'm gonna actually have to go back and look that up <laughs> because otherwise I won't know how many I want to plant or what my plan what my plans were and where to put them all right so just in accordance with their instructions I'm putting um, three of these seeds into each hole so we should have lots of these These may need some kind of a trellis or some something like that to grow up you know just because of the amount of space that they will take up but I haven't grown gourds before so I'm not sure how large the vines will get if anybody has grown them before um, put something in the comments below to let me know um, what I might expect in terms of how much space they will actually take up even if I trellis them. Spray them a little bit and then after that I will top them off with some more soil on top. Then we'll get them under the lights. I'll show you around inside and then we'll go outside um, and take a look at the potager garden and how things are coming along out there. definitely been a good spring for growing because it's been so warm and um, not only has it been warm but um, it's been wet so all of the plants really have been happy about that Now you can water these from below, but one of the things that I like about um, misting from the top is that um, it helps to push the soil around the seeds and make sure that they have good, good contact with the potting soil. All right. And the lights are on. Okay, now I'm just going to give you a quick uh, show of what I've got going on still in the girl room. I have four pots of the tuberous begonias, and um, those will probably be going upstairs soon. They're growing on quite well. This one is the uh, only one coming up in this one. I think there's a there should be another one in there. This one also has two 
So that will be the last one to come up is the other one in there. If it doesn't, it will have been the only one that did not successfully come up. Now in the back here, I have some Bells of Ireland. They are pretty small and a little bit hard to see, but they are back there. And those are a very pretty green flower. Um, in the these two here, I have some Excelsior foxgloves, so those are very teeny tiny, just starting to come up. And then here I have something called Gretel eggplant, and this is kind of like an ornamental eggplant, very tiny uh, white eggplants, and I just uh, thought they were so cute and would look... Um, adorable in pots or in the potage. I don't like eggplant, but my husband does, so we'll see if he decides to eat it. And then here I have a mixture of coleus that is starting to come up. Now, now up high here, I have a couple of different kinds of peppers. In these two, and back over here, I have the Sweet Red Marconi. And then back behind those, here are my uh, Proven Winners uh, Hot and Heavy Peppers. And then right here, I just have some baby tomatoes. And I'm kind of succession planting, because like I said, I've taken some tomatoes up. You can see this tomato plant um, back here is quite... Um, large compared to these in the front. I have some cherry tomatoes and I have some regular side glacier tomatoes and I have some proven harvest good hearted tomatoes. So all different sizes. Um, I think I overwatered this chard you guys. I'm not doing very well with the chard this year. So whoops. Oops oops oops. All right and we just potted up this squash. And then down here, I have some other squash growing. This is my summer squash, and this is supposed to be more of a bush variety, um, so it should have a more upright growth habit. You can see one is sprouting right here. And then in the back, I have a basil, which is still really small. Uh, they take forever to grow when the um, conditions are not that warm and then some lettuce that hasn't come up yet and I've got some lettuce outside and then some blue Indian hyacinth and some chocolate checkered lily in the back I don't know if these seeds will they've got some very complex instructions in terms of how to grow them and I didn't really follow them so we'll see if anything germinates but just thought it'd be fun to try all right, let's go outside and take a look at the potage. Well, guys, it is a beautiful day in Alcatraz, um, the potage garden that is meant to keep my vegetables in and all the rabbits out. Um, I have moved just about every form of protection into my potage because I have Peter Rabbit coming to visit me all the time. All right, right here I have some arugula and some radish and kale and more arugula all planted in here. My strawberries are looking really good. More arugula, kale, arugula, and red Russian kale back there as well. My broccoli that I planted in this garden is still alive, but it went through quite a few frosts. Oh, no, maybe it's not alive anymore. Oh well. I do have some more arugula planted here. And then under the far hoop, you can't see it, but I planted some lettuce. So we'll wait for that to come up. Um, just seeded it directly in. My peas are looking pretty good. They're trying to decide how to get up the trellis. <laughs> And then here I have some blue drumstick alliums that I planted last fall. It was one of the only places that I had non-frozen um, soil. So they're here for now. Um, I will move them out later. 
And then also I have some blue Scylla. I think I called these hyacinthoids in an earlier vi uh, video, but these are actually Scylla. And then some more red Russian kale in here, um, as well as cilantro, which you can see um, the critters had at it. So that's why I have had to put these cloches over them. I'm telling you, those rabbits. And I have some seedlings that I'm definitely going to have to thin out in here. Um, along the outside is the um, arugula here. And then it's hard to see, but then I have a row of carrots. And then um, behind those, I have a row of kale. I think it's winter boar kale. And then I have some more radishes over here. And then again, because I did not have a place to put it, and this was ground that was unfrozen, this is a foxtail lily. And then my garlic row. Okay, let's take a look over here. We have some purple cone flowers that are just starting to come out of the ground. And then I have tried to protect everything using um, these onions which everybody told me should help with keeping the rabbits out, but it hasn't. Nope, not at all. And I have some more seedlings along the front of this bed intermixed with the ajuga. I believe these are also kale that I just kind of dusted in there. So I have kale at all different um, uh, growth points. I have some, I think this is arugula over here. I just kind of have dusted seedlings throughout so that I have them throughout the season. You can see my broccolis got eaten by the rabbit. Very unhappy, ate the taps right off. They do look like they're coming back though, so now they are protected. And all of these are foxglove along the side, as well as some coneflower. I think this one is, um, it's called Cheyenne White. It's um, a very white coneflower. It has an Indian name and I'm, I'm blinking on it right now. And another broccoli over there, which is hard to see because it's just also was eaten. And then some lettuce seedlings are all throughout this bed. They're kind of hard to see. There's a lot of them in this area. Um, again, I'll have to do some thinning another broccoli that was eaten too actually and then my parsley oh and I'm the culprit of eating the one asparagus spear that had come up so far just one um, but it was good it was tasty so that's what we have going on out here here's uh, an update on the planters I did a couple weeks ago I think they look really nice still and um, like I said uh, in some of the comments I had to add in some of the yellow pansies because I just felt like um, it needed a little bit more filler than just the maroon ones and I think that that turned out really pretty. It's a really rich look. Um, but yeah, they look nice on the steps. And then I have up here some kale growing in with my clematis, clematis, which is, um, I believe this one is Mrs. What is her name? Mrs. N. Thompson. Mrs. N. Thompson. I have two of them in there, but only one of them is growing really well so far. And a pansy. And then I have some cannas right here in the middle, um, begonias and pansies in this pot and a matching pot over on the other side of the deck as well. Here's my raspberries and lots of dahlias. Dahlia, dahlia, dahlia. There's some more dahlias over here. Just growing them on until 
I can get them out of these pots and into the ground. A few more weeks before I can do that. All right, so that's what it looks like, everybody. Looks pretty nice. It's been a great spring for growing. I hope you're finding some good things to grow as well. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed uh, planting the squash and doing the potager garden tour with me. Have a wonderful spring day. See you next time.